If you want to make a blinky fish head, you're going to need some stuff. Uh, not least of all is the old bike helmet. Make sure it's an old one because by the time you put all the LEDs on it, you're going to have violated uh, some of the safety uh, constraints on there. I mean, you can still wear it. It's still better than nothing, but it's not as safe as uh, the factory ready bike helmet. So, you know, your head's in your hands here. And any other uh, rigid headgear should do the trick. Uh, now you're going to need uh, some LED strip. You're looking for a WS2812B LED strip, about two and a half meters long, uh, 60 LEDs per meter. Uh, you'll find these under the trade name of uh, NeoPixels, and you can find them on a number of different sites. To go with the LED strip, you're going to need a 1000 microfarad capacitor, uh, a little 400 to 800 ohm resistor. I use an Arduino Pro Micro to do the control. That's it right down there. Nice little guy that uh, you can tape onto your helmet. You'll need a couple of small zip ties, some tape. Uh, I like to use two-sided foam sticky tape uh, for holding the uh, Arduino into place. But you can also use the uh, other tape for insulation and for positioning things. You're going to need a USB charger, and here I'm going to give uh, Microsoft Vancouver a big shout out for supporting the first robotics competition. Uh, that's uh, going to be a new competition uh, here in British Columbia this year. It's been going on for years. They support it strongly, especially down in Washington State where we got a lot of friends down there. You're also going to need some tools, a soldering iron, solder, scissors, pliers, uh, some 22 uh, gauge wire, uh, a little bit of heat shrink, uh, your favorite beverage of course, uh, and some two-sided Velcro wrap to help hold that battery in place. And to top it all off, of course this is somewhat optional, but uh, go to tailwags.com and check out some of the cool hat covers they have right there. And so it doesn't take all that much. You put that stuff together and you've got what you need to make yourself into a blinky fish head. Okay, so now you're going to want to take uh, some of that tape and your LED strip and some scissors. Don't use the scissors just at first. You want to start by taping the LED strip onto the hat in such a way that it's actually in contact with a flat smooth surface on the helmet as much as possible. Uh, depending on your vent uh, requirements on the helmet, you're going to have a harder or an easier time doing this. But uh, you want to get as much of the strip as close to the helmet as you can. There is excellent adhesive on the back of the LED strips, but you don't want to engage that just yet. You just want to do some test fitting and make sure this is all going to work. Because there's a few things that you do have to think through while you're getting this all set up. Now the first thing to think about is uh, that your microcontroller, so your control unit, and your battery are probably going to be tucked away at the back right here in this nice little uh, coved area. And that means that your signal is going to come into the helmet somewhere towards the back. Now you're using one pin on your Arduino to control over 100 LEDs. And that means that you're going to have data being transmitted down that center line. If you look carefully right here, let me just flip this over so it's a bit easier to read. You'll see that your LED strip is marked with three connections. Ground, which is pretty obvious. Five volts, which should also be pretty obvious. And DI and DO, that's your data in and data out. And if you see the arrow right up at the top right there, the arrow indicates the direction that the data is going to flow. The data only flows in one direction because each of the WS2812B chips, those are the little dark areas inside the LED right there, they pass data on from one chip to the next and they only do it in one direction. So if your data comes in right here at the back, it's going to flow in the direction of that arrow. Your LED number zero is going to be your very first one right here, then number one, number two, number three, all the way around your helmet in increasing numbers. So I like to do the bottom as one continuous strip. I find it just saves me a little bit of wiring, goes all the way around, comes back over here, and just as the arrow pointed in at the beginning of the strip, it's now pointing out at the end of the strip. 
and then that data is going to come out of there and it's going to come around to your next strip. You're going to have to use a soldered connection to get the data from right here over to right here and notice the arrows traveling in the right direction. So the data is going to flow all the way over here to the front of the helmet and the data is flowing out of this line right here. The data is going to come around and flow back into this line right here. So follow that arrow back and you can see the direction that the data is flowing. It's going to come all the way back over here to the end. That is going to flow out right here and then I'm going to solder a jumper on, bring it in right over here. It's going to flow up to the front of the helmet right there and going to flow out of that end. It's going to flow into this end. See it's got that DI for digital in and it's going to come back along this side and the very last pixel in our array is going to be right down here at the very back. Uh, this is going to be like a uh, pixel number 120, LED number 120 or so, something like that in this particular helmet. So you're going to want to take uh, the helmet and you're going to want to do some careful test fitting and some careful cutting. If you get it uh, right, then uh, this line of LEDs right here should be fairly symmetrical to this line right over here and the two top ones should be fairly symmetrical and have similar numbers of LEDs in it. So that's how you're going to test fit the LEDs onto your helmet and make sure that you've got them set up nice and that you've got your data flow all worked out. Now, now you're going to peel the backing off of the strip and you can see there's some shiny adhesive on there. That's 3M adhesive. That's good stuff. You press that down hard and uh, it's staying stuck on there. So I'm not going to do that with just one hand. I'll show you the results in just a minute. Once you get going with the uh, backing strip, you can actually just slide it along and gently pull it off and then tap and press that down onto the, uh, onto the surface. And that's a good way to make sure that you're getting nice, smooth, straight connections. Okay, so the uh, strip is now all nicely secured onto the helmet. And as you can see, we've moved uh, in, into the soldering room here. Because we're going to be doing some soldering. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to solder some data lines onto here. So the data is going to come in right here on the DI. It's going to loop all the way around the bottom ring of the helmet. It's going to come to right here on uh, the D out. It's going to jump over to right here on the D in. It's going to follow this one all the way to the front. This one all the way back here. You can see those arrows pointing in the direction. It's going to come over here all the way back this way and then all the way down here to be the last one. <clears throat> now you'll notice right here I do have a little bit of overlap between uh, the strips. I tried to avoid that. I'm not particularly worried about it right here because it's 5 volts overlapping with the 5 volt line and we're actually going to be joining those lines together electrically anyway. So the easiest way to make the solder joints is probably with a person helping you and holding the lines in place. I like to uh, put a dab of solder onto the pad and then uh, strip the wire and cut it to fit so it runs nice and flush to the surface of the helmet. I'm using yellow for my data line. Always a good idea to color code uh, your lines. And I'm using a solid core wire because these wires aren't going to flex very much. There's some uh, power lines and data lines that are going to connect at the back. They are going to flex a bit. Here you can see that data signal is going to come around right here to D out and I've got a little blob of solder right there on D O and it's going to come over here to D I. So I got a little blob of solder on right there. I'll cut a wire to length and solder it in there and I'll finish soldering up some of the data lines on the hat. Okay so I've got the uh, data lines all soldered up there and now I'm going to hook the uh, uh, signal up to the microcontroller. And so I've got some nice three conductor wire. I actually pilfered that off the end of the LED strip. You'll find if you're starting with a brand new LED strip that this may well come uh, pre-soldered and ready to go, even with some additional power lines coming off of it. 
You can add some extra power lines to this if you really want to. Uh, the purists will suggest that uh, allows you to get more power because you don't have to funnel all of your power through your Arduino. Your own Arduino is only going to be happy giving you up to about 500 milliamps. If you want to turn all the LEDs on at full brightness, uh, you're going to need extra power lines coming off here so you could get more than an amp into your circuit. For the most case though, this is going to be more than adequate. We're going to power the uh, uh, entire circuit through the Arduino. That is going to limit us to 500 milliamps of current, which is enough to make your LEDs pretty bright, but it's not enough to turn them all on at full bore. So I've got the three conductor wire. It's uh, coming down right here. The ground and five volts are going to be soldered in directly over here onto the VCC and ground of our Arduino Pro Micro. And the uh, green line is going to be our data line, and this is where the little resistor comes in. Now, technically, if you read the uh, excellent tutorials that Adafruit has available on their website for using their NeoPixels, you actually want that resistor at the other end, back down here, right close to the, uh, to the strip. Because this is a fairly short wire, I'm not worried about that. This resistor is pretty close to the strip. But it is there to help deal with the inductance in this cable when the signal from your Arduino hits the LED, the little WS2812 chip inside that LED right there can't quite handle the, uh, the um, I guess the wave is the best way to uh, discuss it, the reflection, the inductance that builds up in these short little signals that come through. So I'm gonna solder this resistor on right here. That's gonna help reduce the current in the wire, help protect the LEDs. And now I'm gonna cover that with a bit of heat shrink. And I'm going to solder it into pin nine, just because I like the number nine. You can choose any of those um, outputs, just so long as your software matches up with it. Okay, so the Arduino's uh, taped in place there with a little bit of two-sided tape. Wrap of uh, hockey sock tape around there lets me still see the status LEDs on the Arduino, but holds the wires in there nice and snug. Now what I've done is I've come over here and our power and ground come in from uh, our Arduino on this side and I'm immediately taking them off there and using the red and the black line, uh, red and the brown line, I'm all out of black uh, wire right now. Uh, so I'll use some non-standard colors, but at least I'm using a color scheme. I'll bring that around here and I'll make that connection to this end. doesn't have to be the exact end, but just uh, somewhere on this end of the long LED strip. That's going to help distribute the power more evenly around that long LED strip and ensure equal brightness between the LEDs on this side, far away from the power supply originally, and the LEDs on this side, close to the power supply originally. Our next step is going to be to hook power and ground up to the... Uh, LED strips on the top of the helmet. Okay, so I've got uh, ground connected to ground and five connected to five, ground to ground, five to five, all the way along for the different strips that are going up and down here. Again, it doesn't matter exactly which connections you use on there, so long as you try and keep them fairly close to the uh, power supply source right back here. The next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to add the 1000 microfarad capacitor. That goes across the ground and plus 5 lines to provide some voltage buffering. And I'm going to tuck that into one of the vents on the helmet. And to make it fit just a little bit better, I've just soldered a couple of wire leads on there. I'm going to cover them up with a little bit of heat shrink. And then I'm going to tuck that into the helmet and we should be almost done. A little bit of two-sided tape holds the capacitor in place and it connects into the power main right there and it connects to the ground and the plus five so that should help smooth out the power supply when we uh, change our blink rates. Before putting any software on it I just like to take care of some final details and here I've drilled a small hole and ran a zip tie around to strain relieve some of the more critical wires. I've uh, never found that I've gone too far wrong by adding a bit of strain relief to a circuit. So 
uh, those wires are strain relieved right uh, right where they're soldered on and the tape is uh, helping prevent them from vibrating around too much down there on the Arduino. Okay, it's uh, time to add some software. Once the hat is assembled, you can now strap the battery into the back, plug it in, uh, make sure you drop some code on there. Now you're going to have to write your own code, but uh, if you Google NeoPixel, uh, the Adafruit NeoPixel library and some excellent tutorials will come up on how to run your WS2812 uh, Blinky LEDs. And so you cover all that up, get that plugged in, you use a rechargeable cell phone battery uh, or cell phone recharger that gives you a nice 5 volt USB. And if you want a uh, Blinky fish head, you just pull that cover right down batteries stuffed away in there nobody sees the electronics and you're blinking there's a couple of happy fish all ready for bike the night